shall we? Oh, you know. So it appears that you are actually still Hello! Here. Hello, hello! I am Tarth. I'm living on a dime. I'm checking to see if we're under a tornado watch. Sorry, it does not look like it. Okay. All right. Today we are talking. What's what's my keyword here? I need my keyword. Uh, what is this? The postal code. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me go to livingonadime.com to figure out what I'm talking about today. I am talking about how long does stored food last? Yes. Is that my keyword for YouTube or just for Google? <laughs> you love me, don't you? All right, guys. I am Tara. I the must. Other <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't even go there. Okay. <laughs> Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. We have it 25% off. Right now, got my apron 50% off, just $15 on my cute little get together people apron. I think a few million people kind of need this at this moment in time. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, all right, we are talking about how long does stored food last. That's actually not what I had had planned for today. I think I confused myself. Okay. Can they hear me now or yeah. are they blocked? All right. <laughs> so I guess I'm changing what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about food storage for your stockpile. And I want to read this email I got this morning. From Lindsay, she says, I ordered your cookbook last month. Ooh, 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 ooh. I remember you, Lindsay. Do you know why I remember you? Because I had to reprint your label like four times. I kept having an issue with printing on your label. <laughs> I ordered your cookbook last month. Today was the first time I went grocery shopping using it and the price book. Oops, I don't have my price book. Where'd my, well, our little price book. Uh, we're almost sold out of the discounted ones. If you guys want a price book, where did my price book go? Um, here. Oh, well, that's not the discounted one. Oh, here it is. Okay. So if you guys want the price book, I think I have like six of these left that are the discounted 50% off ones. If you want the price book 50% off, I've only got like five or six left. I have more on order. Thanks to Copy Co. and Fort Collins. Love for reading going. Yes. We just talked to them today. <laughs> well, for read anyway. Yeah. Uh, so the discounted ones right here, half price because it was a misprint. I've only got like five or six left. These ones will probably be coming next week. Price book. What is it? Why was she so excited about using it? Because... We put here our lowest prices that we stock up on and we gave you, give you spaces for you to put your price on there so you can keep track of when something is a really good deal. So, ordered your cookbook, went grocery shopping with it in the price book, was able to make sure I was getting a good price, which is something I've never done. See, you go girl. After watching your show last night, I was able to spend, are you ready for this? I'm ready. $270 and get three to six months worth of stockpile plus our regular groceries. Wow, that's pretty impressive. We are so grateful for you guys, Lindsay. You go. Nice job, Lindsay. Lindsay. All right. Oh, wait, I need my post because I forgot to print it. Okay. So we're talking about what to do with that stockpile, what to do with that food that is that you have stocked in your emergency. Um, you know, I don't like calling it your emergency stash or whatever you want to call it. I think instead of prepping, instead of stockpiling, instead of storing, whatever, you need to think of it more as having a mini grocery store in your home. And I got the question, well, Tara, what do you do with the food that you stock up on? 
Well, when I run out of brown sugar here, I run downstairs, get the brown sugar, bring it up here, put it on the list, buy brown sugar next time I go to the store and put it back downstairs. Okay? So I just rotate out and just use the food that I already have. Now, there are some canned goods, some soy, rice, emergency meal type things that I have that we don't eat on an everyday basis, but I got them for free. And so I just keep those for emergency in case we really just are totally out of food. But for the regular stockpile stuff, I just use it, put it on my list, and then just keep doing it. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so how do you store this food? Here's what you want to do. Now, I, when we had three cats, may the Lord rest their souls. Well, not really. I know at least one of them's not gone to heaven. Um, oh, poor thing. <laughs> I think he was redeemed at the end. I know. I liked him the last few Okay, <laughs> the last few minutes. <laughs> no, I said months. Months. I heard you say minutes. I heard. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, when we had three cats, I would buy the cat litter in these containers specifically for food storage. And you're gonna say, what? Here's the thing guys, look around and look for things that you can repurpose, I hate that word too, but anyway, that you can repurpose for something else. So for me, when I was buying cat litter, even though this thing is honking heavy, I would have the boys lift it for me because I wanted the container for food storage. Now, this one here, has all of Mike's garlic powder right there. Oh my. And believe it or not, I still have a dining on a dime box. So with about two months supply of garlic? Yes. <laughs> and I also have another dining on a dime box that the books are shipped in full of garlic powder also. I know, I had an issue with garlic powder. Go watch last Monday's show if you ordered. Now, what I did was I just rinsed these out and then I would store stuff in their original containers in there. So, stuff like spaghetti, rice, those kinds of things. Get the small bags and I just layer them in here and then they sit down on the edges too. And I have full containers of rice and spaghetti and that kind of thing in there so that even though we don't have a food storage pro or i mean a food storage even though we don't have a bug problem here in, Can in colorado when we lived in kansas kansas has this really lovely bug called co cockroaches <laughs> and if you weren't careful you could have cockroaches the cleanest people in kansas can have cockroaches so I just have gotten into the habit of just storing my food this way just because. Now, this also holds boxes of macaroni and cheese. I've got like three or four of these that just have mac macaroni and cheese layered in there. I have several that just have spaghetti. I have several that just have like elbow macaroni pasta. I have several that just have rice. Um, several that have soy dinners and soy and rice type dinners in there just all in here okay now if you were to take this same container and buy an emergency prepper food thing online or at Walmart or whatever this would cost you no less than $50 minimum sometimes or even more than that but by doing this myself I can have my own little prepper thing and um, cost me five, ten dollars, depending on what food I'm putting in there. If it's macaroni and cheese, ten dollars. If it's rice, five dollars. So um, these are the kinds of things that I store them in. Now, one thing that I do because my 
my extra food is in a in a our heater room what do you call it mechanical room i don't know whatever you call it and we could at one point have a problem with bugs haven't yet been here nine years knock on knock on wood but uh, well thank you i think that was a compliment the thought had crossed my mind but i, I know it's like, like, you know. see you <laughs> What I do is I get some stuff called diatinaceous earth. You guys write this down. Diatinaceous earth. It's on Amazon. I don't know. Can you get on Amazon and get a link for everybody for some diatinaceous earth? Um, I get it in the big 10 pound bags because I use it in my garden. What is diatinaceous earth? Diatinaceous earth is ground up dinosaurs, basically. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so... What it is, is it's basically ground up fossils. And what they do is they make it into this really, really super fine powder and you can get a food grade. So it's perfectly safe for humans consumption. But what I do is I just sprinkle a little bit. So I open it up and just sprinkle a little bit on the top. And then I sprinkle a little bit on the lids, just a little bit. And what it does is when bugs walk across it or if bugs ingest it, Which I one? got that one. If bugs and Mike's getting the one, it's only 20 bucks, but it's great. And this 10 pound bag, when we finished our basement, I put it all over inside the walls. And I still had a half a bag left. It's really good bug killer. And we really don't have a bug problem. But just be better safe than sorry. Just sprinkle it all over your food storage. So like I have it on the shelves, just sprinkle a little bit. You're not gonna go dump a whole bunch all over, but you wanna just lightly sprinkle it, okay? That helps with bugs. Now, next. If you get things like, is it pet safe? Yes. If you, and <clears throat> you know, if you get tapeworms, you just take some of that stuff and it'll just take care of it. Just like that. If you get any kind of worms at all, you just take some of that stuff and it'll just kill the worms and you'll be just seeing little white flecks in your poop and it'll just be all happy. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so next. Things like spaghetti sauce, canned goods, I only keep in the original container. Canned goods can last up to 10 years. I would say you're pushing it for 10 years. And I honestly, I've got some canned goods over here that I'm using just to get used up before we move. Look, did you notice my wording? I said before we move, not if we move. Yep. See, I did that, hear that positive energy has been flowing forth. Okay, anyway, six or seven years old that I'm using up, I wouldn't. That's really pushing it. I mean, you could keep it for 10, and then if you're just starving, you have it. But here's the thing with canned goods if it's bulging, if it's dented, if you open it and it pops, do not use that food. If it smells bad, if it looks bad, don't use that food, okay? But most canned food will stay that long. Jarred food like this will stay about four to five years, okay? Jarred food like that. Now, what do you do if you get things like beans? Now, I got for free like 100 pounds it's probably more than that, to be honest. Probably 200 pounds worth of beans. Now, we don't really eat beans on a very long-term level. Or on a daily. We don't eat beans on a daily basis is the word I'm looking for. We don't. I don't know. I, be, I'm getting more used to, after being married to Mike for 25 years, I'm finally getting used to the bean, taste of beans. And I almost like them. But... Because I got them for free and they're so easy to cook and so cheap and they're such, oh, there's a rock in this one. 
and they're so um, nutritious, I'm keeping these because if we need them for an emergency, we have them. This is, look, I just found a rock in this one, guys. This is why when you do beans, I'm going to show how to cook them, but you need to be careful and inspect your beans. Okay, so these are all um, pickle jars. I just put them in pickle jars. I have put them in coffee cans, the big plastic coffee cans. This keeps the bugs out, okay? Beans, rice, and honey will literally last indefinitely. Seriously. White rice, not brown rice. Brown rice goes rancid in six months. Don't, you, don't use it for stocking up. Oh, dear. That's not good. Um, <laughs> somebody's going to step on that now. Um, Probably you. you. <laughs> and... Um, White rice, beans, and honey will literally last indefinitely. And I mean 20, 30, 40 years, really. They will. Store in a cool, dry place. For all of this, guys, it needs to be a cool, dry place. Okay? Now, flowers, your flowers, and your milks, and this kind of thing. Flour needs to be used up within a year. So you could, maybe two years. But really flour will not last a super long time. Now, if you happen to get one of those big emergency type buckets like the Mormons sometimes have supply stores where they get their supplies, you can get the big buckets. That will last longer because of the way it's sealed. Um, if you get it from like a, Amish store or something like that, occasionally you can get the same type of big buckets. Those kinds will last longer, but if you're just getting the regular flour, really I don't think you can really go more than 18 months pushing it up two years if you need to. Like I said on Monday show, don't go and do the bulk buying. Get the smaller packages for average families. Now, if you have four kids, five kids of course this does not apply to you I know every situation is different just adapt it but for the average family of two to four people nowadays that's what I'm talking about chocolate milk no regular milk dry milk I was looking this has how to make whipped topping on the back of this um Really? And I think it's the same recipe in dining. Um, okay, so now milk will last two years is the expiration date. And then up to two years after that, it should be fine. Okay. I use this for baking. You can mix up dry milk for drinking. But, oh, it's slightly different than ours. I'm sharing the link again for Diatomaceous <gasps> Earth since people ooh. are asking. Ooh, ooh, I should maybe try this recipe. Okay, so what do I use this for? Baking. We don't like to drink it. We don't drink milk. But if you want to save on milk and you don't like the flavor, you can do a couple things. You can make it slightly thicker. So this calls for one cup of milk use a third of a cup of dry milk to seven eighths of a cup of cold water so what i would do is go up to maybe just slightly more add an extra tablespoon or two to that you can also do regular milk and mix half regular milk and half dry milk if your family is a big milk drinker now once again on the milk if we're talking about prepping and that kind of thing, this is not the time to let your family just drink whatever milk they want. If they're just going and grabbing a glass of milk because they're thirsty, uh, no, that stops immediately. You drink water. In your, if you're in an emergency situation, you don't need to be wasting valuable food on calories that people don't need, okay? All right, next, flour. If you happen to get it in that and it's not big enough, put it in 
something like this, put it in, like a freezer bag, put it in, you know those Christmas tins that the popcorn comes in? You can put a couple of smaller bags in those. That will help keep the bugs out. You can do the same thing instead of this. Use those Christmas tins. You can use totes. Totes are really good. And you can find them at garage sales for 50 cents or a dollar all the time. Um, those are the kinds of things that you can use. Now, what are the little black dots in flour and rice? <laughs> okay, so, yep. Sorry. But we had a number of people asking, did you say you got a whole bunch of beans for free? I did. They're asking, what's the situation? How did you do that? Do I want to tell them? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you in just a second. Little black dots. Yes, I'll tell you guys. It's no big deal. Um, if you see little black specks in your rice or your flour, those are weevils. To prevent that, Put it in the freezer for 24 hours and then you don't have to store your flour in the freezer after that. Just put it in a container or a bag or something. If you see weevils in there, they have gotten in through a teensy tiny hole somewhere or most likely they were harvested with the flour or the rice. Okay. So, um, if that's the case, depending on how desperate you are, okay? Now, I know there's people just gonna be going, oh, gross, but what they used to do in the Old West when they couldn't get flour was they would just sift out the weevils and eat the flour anyway. I know. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But nowadays, if you want, you can just go ahead and throw it away. But if food is in a desperate situation, I wouldn't do that. I would just sift it out and go ahead and use your flour anyway. Okay, to the beans. So I got, and that's what some of the canned goods that I'm using. Oh! What was that? There's a spider. Oh. Here, give me that towel right there. I can get it. I thought it was your spider killer. Well, do something then. Well, I don't want to use a towel. Ugh, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. As I'm saying we don't have bugs. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. Okay. Back to where, thank you, thank you my knight in slightly tarnished armor. Just I appreciate the, it. I bit the other day how I brutally slaughtered one of yeah. <laughs> I was just laying there peacefully in bed, and all of a sudden, like three inches away from my head, Mike goes, <laughs> like, what are you doing? By your head? It was by your knee. It was by my head. <laughs> Actually, I was laying in bed and it was by my knee. I was just exaggerating. Um, and I was like, what are you doing? He said, I killed a spider. I was like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, oh yeah, free beans, free food, free rice. Okay, so I had an elderly aunt that was going to the food pantry for her senior housing place. And they, she would go for all the little, little ladies there and um, pick up all the food pantry food for them. Well... What they would do is they would, of course, get rid of everything that they didn't want. And so they can't take it back to the food pantry. The food pantry would not give you an option to pick out what you wanted and what you didn't want. They just had boxes and said, here's your box, here's your box, here's your box. And each elderly person got enough food, I am not kidding, every week to feed our family of six. It was insane. But anyway, because this is how much food we throw away in our country. Anyway, because a lot of the food was expired or close to being expired, they couldn't give it back to the food pantry. So she just asked me if I wanted it. And I was like, well, sure. So for like two years, every Thursday, we, 
we would get a couple of boxes of food and it was beans and brown rice and those soy meals and canned beans and corn and carrots. So that's how I got a whole bunch of free food. Half of it we didn't eat like the beans, but they store really well and if there's an emergency situation and we just need food, we can eat it. Now normally I wouldn't say store food that you don't eat, but in this situation, I didn't pay for it. I got it for free. So, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now, what else? Stuff like oatmeal. Oatmeal is the same as the other grains. Grains do not last as long, with the exception of white rice. Grains do not last as long as other things. So you need to use things like oatmeal, your flour, what other grains would there be? Your pastas, those kinds of things, quicker. Um, stuff like the canned, or the powdered, this is powdered peanut butter powdered peanut butter. Um, it is uh, best to store it just like this. Now, vacuum sealing. Let's say you use this peanut butter, but you can't use the whole thing. What you can do is open it up, use a vacuum sealer, put half of it in a vacuum sealer, and then use the other half. This is really good in smoothies. Um, the same is with home canning. If you like to home can, you go right ahead and do that. I am not into canning. I don't like canning. I had a canning jar blow up on my cousin and I heard that story. I wasn't there. I was just, I mean, I just have heard this story that mom's told me over the last 30 years, 40 years, whatever. And, uh, so I just have not ever gotten into canning because of that, because I am accident prone and that would probably happen to me. So anyway, um, all right, let me run through foods real quick here and then how long will they last? Potatoes, sweet potatoes, two to five weeks. Onions, one to two months. Do not store them together because the gases can cause them both to spoil each other quicker. Peanuts in a shell, one to two months. In a can, about six months past the expiration date. Winter squash, one to three months. Your acorn squash, your pumpkin, your spaghetti, your butternuts. Apples, five days at room temperature, six months in the refrigerator. Tea, tea is one of those things it will last forever. Six to 12 months after the best buy date is usually when you get the best taste the flavor goes down after that but it's still usable powdered milk two to three years beef jerky one to two years canned fruits and vegetables six to eight years past the best buy date do not use canned goods if dented or swollen or they explode when you open them dried pasta two to four years past the best buy date bullion cubes two two years of sealed Peanut butter, up to two years if it's still sealed. Milk, chocolate, like just chocolate candy bars, one to two years. Dark chocolate, two to five years. Why is that? Because the milk in the milk chocolate spoils faster than having no milk in the dark chocolate. If your chocolate gets those white spots on it, it's fine. It's just a separation of the cocoa butter. It's no big deal. Uh, Tuna, canned or vacuumed, if you have a choice, get canned over the vacuum uh, sealed pouches. I got some vacuum sealed pouches and I went to go use it and they have spoiled really bad. Oh, it was bad. I think it was so bad that I ended up puking in the trash can because I was just like, oh my goodness, when I opened it. The can works much better than the vacuum pouches, if you have a choice. Dried beans indefinitely, keep them dry though. Honey indefinitely, if it crystallizes, just put it in warm water, not boiling. Just put the whole bottle in warm water. I'm actually doing a video on that. Well, what happened was I shot the video, went to go put it up yesterday and I didn't have the last half of the video, so I have to reshoot the last half of the video. But anyway, if the honey crystallizes, just warm it up it will turn back into regular honey, no big deal. 
liquor will last indefinitely. Now, we don't drink, but I do have a little bit of liquor. Why? For emergency purposes. And I'm not talking about <laughs> I got that out of the having car. a stiff drink. I'm talking about for medical emergencies, you got to sew up somebody's leg and you need to give them some booze so you can get their leg sewed up. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. White rice, indefinitely brown rice, only six months. White flour, six months past the best by date. Wheat flour, used by the best by date. Uh, milk, in the refrigerator a week past the uh, best buy date for fresh, two to three weeks. I just found a typo on the website. Um, for sour milk, if, I forgot to put weeks there. Probably I did that. Um, if milk is clumpy, smells vinegary or something like that, it is spoiled and not just sour and you can go ahead and throw it away. Nuts, six months on the shelf, one year in the freezer. They do go rancid. Don't keep them two years. Everybody's had that grandma okay. or grandpa that has left the nuts in the freezer for three years and takes it. A friend, a uh, friend, a uh, viewer said that her grandpa or somebody did that at a family reunion. Everybody was gagging at whatever it was he brought. <laughs> I was like, yep, I've had those too. All right, eggs, two to three weeks past the sell-by date in the refrigerator. Condiments and dressing, six months past the due date, or I mean the best buy date. Whew. Now you know how to store your food. Whoa, that was quick. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Dining on a dime tip book right here. 25 percent off right now, guys. Today, look what we got. The proof for the next edition. Right there is the proof for the next edition. Just so you know, the price is going up. So unless we have to move in the next four weeks, this is probably the lowest price it's going to be. I think I have about 15 to 20 days worth of books left. And then we're sold out. We're getting down to the wire, yes? Elizabeth says nobody wants to go six months past the due date. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. So what are you... Okay. okay, let me see something just a second. Okay, go ahead. I have no idea, folks. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I think she asked before you talked about pasta, and I didn't hear what you said about pasta, but Vina was wondering how long does pasta last? Did, was it... Yeah, so it'll last a year or two, I think. Is that what I said? I've had mine a year or two past the best by date. All this, guys, is at livingonadime.com livingonadime.com. Oh, I was going to have you do a printable form. I forgot. How long do foods last? Type that in livingonadime.com. That whole list is there. We'll see if we can get a printable made up in the next. Well, who I don't, I make no guarantees on when we can get it done. <laughs> Let's see. We answered that one. Somebody asked, do you label all the buckets with a use by date? These buckets? No, but I label them with what's in here because why? Because these buckets mostly store the rice and the rice. But the rest of the stuff, I just, I don't know, I just keep taking it out and using it. So, so I have like six of these empty. So what I do is I'll have the one that I'm using out of and then the new stuff goes into the empty one. So I don't really put a date on it because I just am always rotating it out oh agatha wants to know how long did cup of noodle ramen last probably oh a long, my long time. goodness 150 years and my kids would be so happy <laughs> <laughs> i think if there was only one food in the room <clears throat> one food in the world my kids would pick cup of ramen noodles <laughs> uh let's see where were we okay mm. 
diatomaceous earth. I'm sorry. There was one other thing that I forgot to say. Diatomaceous earth is great in the garden. And if you have ants, somebody mentioned the ants, it works really well for garden pests. It's an organic garden pest control and it works really well in the garden. The only problem is if you live in a place where there's really heavy rains, you have to re-put it on after heavy rains. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Oh, there's a whole bunch of questions. Wanda wants to know how long does the homemade vanilla last? Oh, since it's indefinitely. In, since it's in alcohol, I imagine yeah. it would last a long the time. The alcohol kills anything. See, bacteria is the big spoiler for a lot of things. So a lot of things like your pastas and your... Well, even stuff like this, like your pastas and stuff like this. If bacteria is not in there, it just kind of degrades the taste and the flavor and that kind of thing. It just, it doesn't taste as well, but it would probably be fine if it doesn't smell bad and it doesn't look bad. It would be fine if you have an emergency situation and you need to use it for that. Uh, okay, <clears throat> let's see. I did not know you were going to pause that quickly. Okay, uh, Courtney wants to know if you use dried milk for baking, do you use the same amount as if it were liquid? Yes. Okay. Kimberly. And a lot of times what you can do is just mix <clears throat> the milk powder in, like if I'm making, what, coffee cake, you can just pour the milk powder in and then just add your water. You don't have to mix it up first. And Kimberly said thought eggs would last longer. Um, two, well, two to three weeks is average. I have gone five to six weeks. And Dining on a Dime Volume 2 coming soon to a garage, I mean warehouse near you. Okay, not near you, near us. Um, in Dining on a Dime 2. Hopefully near us. Uh, hopefully near us. <laughs> uh, we hope it's near us. Um, I have a chart that says... Um, I have a chart in there that says... Um, how to tell if eggs are bad or good and I always get it mixed up but if you put it in water and okay if you put it in water and it floats if it floats it's bad if your eggs sink or go on the side it's fine if they sink or stand your eggs are okay but if your eggs float they are bad yeah, well, somebody else had that question, so there you go. Uh, Kimberly also asked, when jelly has been open and refrigerated, how long does it usually last? A long time, like six months to a year. The thing is, sugar is a preservative in jelly, and it will last quite a while. I mean, I would say a good six months for sure. I'm going to do a whole nother show on how long stuff lasts in the refrigerator and freezer. I mean, I'll answer the questions if they're today, but just so you guys know, Mom's coming on Sunday, and uh, so we're going to have a whole bunch of um, videos talking about stuff like that. Did you say, somebody was saying floating eggs are bad, sinking eggs are good, that's what you said, right? Yes. Okay, just making sure that you didn't say it the other way. Okay. Um, Susan went to Aldi, bought 40 cans of fruits and veggies for my mini grocery store today. You go! See, that's where people... I, I really need to push this more. This is where people get hung up. They hear the word stockpile. They hear the word prepper. Instead, you need to change your mind to think, this is my mini grocery store. I don't go grocery shopping, but like every two weeks to a month. Now, I will have Mike, for those of you who've seen Mike at the grocery store, I'm not real good at planning ahead, believe it or not. I'm doing a show on prepping, but I'm not real good at planning ahead. So sometimes, if he's working at the library, I'll say, you know what? I changed my mind and decided I'm doing chocolate cake for the show and I don't have eggs or whatever. Can you stop by and pick me some up? I'll have him pick me stuff up for the show. But as far as regular grocery shopping, we really don't do it. I mean, I really don't go every two to four weeks it's closer to four weeks than two weeks i mean i'll we'll sit there and we'll not have milk for a month because i will i refuse to go to the grocery store to get one thing because we can just do without if we don't have bread i'll make biscuits i'll make coffee cake i'll make pancakes i'll make homemade bread i'll make 
you know, whatever. But I won't go to the store just for a loaf of bread. And so these mini grocery stores help you in your basement, help you not to have to do that so often too. Um, sorry. I was sharing the link again. Um, Darlene also said, uh, Darlene, Darlene said, hi there, made strawberry jam today. I told her that sounds yeah, awesome. It's really good. Um, Rebecca, thanks to you, I stocked up on flour and sugar at Christmas time. When the stores were sold out, I was still able to cook your delicious recipes. Oh, thanks. Yay. Yeah, we had a problem when the quarantine hit because I was smack dab in the middle of recipe testing. And I just happened to use up all of my flour. And because I was testing like 10 recipes a day for a while and I ran out. Oh, somebody's got a birthday soon, a birthday soon. Dad, oh dad, this time next week, our 10 year old's gonna be gone. He's going to be gone. Oh, her 10 year old's going to be gone. What's funny is every year she says that. <laughs> and he's like, I'm still going to be here when I'm 11. I'm just like, going to be for a one we'll night sleep older. We'll have a brand new 11 year old, but we won't have our 10 year old anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. But anyway. <laughs> and Cindy says, my children love to shop in my store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I know. B Ellie was like, she was packing to move out, and she, <laughs> she, was, she was cleaning out the pantry. <laughs> she took all my tuna. I was like, where's my tuna? So I had to go buy more tuna. <laughs> so let's see. Um, somebody was asking about, oh, on the diatomaceous earth, it does not keep mice away, right? No. Because it's... The, the reason it kills bugs is because they try to eat it, and it, it has sharp it edges that their exoskeleton and, damages yeah. them, and then the bugs yeah. die. Yeah. Um, Pat says, great in the garden for ants. Yes, definitely. Um, and somebody else had another comment. Teresa, yet yeah, you do still eat it. I don't understand She's why you, to you put, I... oh, put them in the freezer. If they're in there, just throw them out. No, you put what? your flour in the freezer before, and it keeps the eggs from hatching. I'm sorry, but they're they're in there. You eat it all the time. Tell them your food thing from the grocery store. Well, hold on, I was gonna say, if I see bugs in the food, I probably wouldn't eat it. Yeah. But. Well, if we're desperate, we would. I hate to tell you, Teresa. I think you already know this, but for other people, I hate to be the one to illuminate you if you don't know. But I used to work in a grocery store, and all food has stuff in it. There's a certain allowable amount, because when you're growing food out of the ground. There are going to be, you know, there's going to be bacteria. There are going to be microscopic bugs. Mm -hmm. They do their best to filter that stuff off. But one of the reasons why you cook food is because that stuff is there. And there's just no way to have food and not have that on it because it's grown in the earth. <laughs> so so um, that's why so, for certain so. kinds of foods, there's, you know, specific recommendations for cooking it yeah and things like salads you wash them and clean them because... well and mike said that they had a certain amount of rat poop that was allowed in food <laughs> what did want to eat? and i was that? like oh my goodness well, but you know they do because and, uh, and, you're not going to get it all gone that's why organic you ain't catch me eating organic food because i don't want all that stuff in my food well i, hate I to want tell a good you pesticide that, used on my food because there's no way to eat food and just not have any yeah of that at all Thankfully, most food has a very small amount, so that's Yeah, good. uh, Christine, <clears throat> I think that's how you say it. Put the loose leaf tea in a rice cooker once stale and refresh it. That's a great I idea. Know that, but that's great. Would you say that wheat or spelt berries should be stored in a freezer or fridge? Sacred Wonders wants to know. I would say if you have room, I would store them in there. If not, I would just vacuum seal them or something like that. Um... How long, for... How long does spaghetti sauce last once opened in the fridge? A week? Claire wants to know how long for frozen ground beef or chicken? Uh, six months. And then you can cook it and go another six months if you want to freeze. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, vacuum seal it. If you want to cook it and vacuum seal it, you can probably get nine months out of it. And when you say freeze it six months and then cook it another six months, cook it and then refreeze it another yep. six months. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mary Beth just came from Aldi. A big blessing. Half off sale. Woo! 
73% ground beef average to just a dollar. 65 a pound you go girl those deals are out there i don't care what they're saying they're lying to you about grocery prices they are lying um did you say this would be a printable we are trying to make this a printable i meant for mike to do it today and i went to go get my hair cut and i forgot to tell him so um let's see mom is coming sunday woohoo bumblebee says let's see uh, Claudia, I've seen that you could use silicone ice cream trays and crack a rag and freeze after they are frozen, put them in zipper bags. Yes, you can. Nice. How do you make baked goods if you don't have milk? For example, pancakes, biscuits, etc. I use dry milk. They also have dried powder milk. Um, you could use evaporated milk. You could use sweetened condensed milk if you know how to bake. Sweet and condensed milk is condensed, so it's not as liquid. So you would have to add a little bit more water and a little less sugar. So if you are good at experimenting with baking, you might be able to do that. I wouldn't just for, you know, Susan start wonders, now. do we know of a good vacuum sealer? Mom just uses the food saver. Okay. Um, so I'm going to look through these. There's some other questions that don't have anything to do with the okay. topic. So I was going to go to that okay. in a minute. Um, Laura, Lori made jam last week that didn't work, and so runny strawberry jam is now strawberry syrup. See, way to See? reuse. <laughs> way to make. Really, that's it. And, and if you guys have jam that you didn't use, just use it as a, um, you don't have to make it into syrup, but I just use it as a topping for uh, pancakes and waffles. I just put jam on there a lot of times instead of syrup when I don't have syrup. I don't even make it into a syrup. I just put it on there. And you can add corn syrup to it if you wanted more syrupy, but yeah. Uh, Vicky says, I love my new apron. Get it together, people. The apron is so well made using quality material. Thank I love you. it so much. Yeah, actually, this is a pretty stinking cool apron. But, and I've only got like 50 left. Mom and Grandma are packaging up the last ones when she gets here. Um, I mean, I have them. I had left some here, but I took some over to, to, for mom and grandma to pack. Um, but I think I only have like 50 or 60 left. I don't think we're going to be reprinting though. So if you guys want an apron for 15 bucks, 50% 50 off, grab it. Cause your family needs to get it together, people. Yes. All right. Let's check over here real quick. Uh, before we go to the regular questions. Hello, Ooh, Dagmar, today. family. Dagmar says, today's my anniversary. We've made it 48 years. I watch you all the time. Love you guys to pieces. Keep it up. Wow, good job not killing them. I'm having a real hard time with that. <laughs> yeah. This quarantine's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> I just better keep my mouth shut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next show, Tara and Mike divorce. Tara's uh, had it. Allie wants to know if you're going to be moving closer to your mom. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> technically... <laughs> That's what I okay. Say. Well, technically, it depends. If she's staying where she's at, we're going to be about a half an hour closer. If she doesn't stay where she's at, she's going to be about two minutes closer. <laughs> we're trying to find a place with enough land or a big enough house so that she can have her own house on our land or have a nice walkout basement for her a house we're we're really wanting her own house but trying to find land in colorado is almost almost impossible nothing is impossible with god and we are having faith yes yes uh, Tanya's reviews. How long does spaghetti or salsa once open last in the fridge? You did say that a minute ago. Yeah, somebody else, right? a week for spaghetti sauce. Salsa will last six months. Mom's actually mm -hmm. mom's bringing a load of stuff out to come for moving when she comes. So we'll see. But uh, okay, does it does it help to put a paper towel in with the veggie bags? I'm not sure what that means. So sometimes it does. It helps get the condensation um you know try it and see if your vegetables last longer i haven't honestly i haven't experimented just to see because we just use them quick enough that i haven't had to everyone says gosh jack is growing up i feel like he's grown a lot in one month he has. yes he has actually it's funny just sometimes just before certain birthdays they seem to sprout up a whole lot 
Uh, do we have any 20th anniversary books left? Judy, Judy wants to know. I have about 200 and some. I didn't count today, but I have about 200 and some left. It's not going to be the 20th anniversary edition next time, guys. We took out all the stuff about how we wrote the book and all of these kinds of pictures. With, oh, aren't they cute, Dad? Yes, yes, they are. They were we so We had to keep cute. enough for ourselves to admire our children. So, oh, I need to set out a, a box so we have a case for us. Um, and so all the, it's not going to be the 20th anniversary. All the recipes from the 20th anniversary edition will be in here, but none of the how we wrote the book or anything like that. We had to get the book under 600 pages. We were just having major binding issues. Something had to go. That was it, unfortunately. Um, Glenna wanted you to know, paid off car last month and only have five more double payments on our mortgage and four more payments on student loans. Thanks. Been hitting it for wow. one year and a half and reduced four years off. That is you awesome, go. Glenna. It's funny, I remember when we started Good paying job. extra and it occurred to me, wow, if we pay off this much, it takes this much off later. Yeah, and In so we really started nailing those mailing those payments in oh thank um, you Cher says purchasing multiple copies of your price book to use as giveaways oh thanks Yay. i don't have a lot left so if you're gonna get them grab them How long before on the that? discounted ones so the discounted price books i've only got i've only got a few left of the discounted ones the correctly printed ones um are going to be next week we should have them next week we'll probably go ahead and pre-sell them and just because I should be able to start getting some. Okay, let me look really. How quick do you here. make fresh vegetables last two to four weeks? Well, first of all, buy things that are longer lasting, like potatoes and onions and carrots and celery and cucumbers. Cucumbers will last about two weeks, lettuce about a week, strawberries blueberries, raspberries, all blackberries, all those fresh kinds of things only last about four to five days don't wash them as soon as you get home and that helps them to not go bad quite so fast but if you see they're starting to go bad you can cut off the bad parts smash it up add some sugar and you can use it for like a syrup or a pancake topping that kind of thing okay let's take a look here on the other questions Oops. wait go down that bottom one first let me answer that one first Where? very bottom Maybe you could do a show on downsizing for a move. I need inspiration. Go back up while you're getting the questions. Let me tell you, just get rid of it. When I move, I just dump it all. I mean, it doesn't seem like I dump it all. But you guys should have seen our trash can. It was kind of funny. So the last six weeks, we've had two and three trash cans out there overflowing because I just start dumping everything that I know is trash and I'm not taking with me for sure. I just get rid of it now. And what's hilarious is we've had two kids gone this week visiting mom in Kansas. Our trash wasn't even half full. <laughs> like what are I mean, they throwing one away? can wasn't even half full. I was like, what are you kids putting in the trash? So we're going to have a trash discussion when they get home. It's not going to matter. Ellie's moving out anyway, but. <laughs> okay, next questions. Uh, oh, sorry. Do we ship to Canada? Yes, Megan, we do. But I will warn you, this is a very heavy book and it is $50 just for the shipping. I'm very sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. That's just the cost of the shipping. Canada we do. 50? Yeah. Oh, wow. We have an ebook that you can get if you don't want to buy that, which I totally understand. Okay. Uh, Ooh, Denise loves ramen with sesame oil. That might be a good thing to do. We need to find out about the hurricane. Andrea says, good evening, timely info. So I'm about to get our pantry hurricane ready, but I keep hearing people talk about it and I haven't yeah. seen anything. Hey, on Jack, come here. <laughs> Will you ever help us with vegetable garden? Ugh. Okay, so I had thought about doing gardening, but the problem is now it's almost too late. I mean, you really need to get your stuff in. So Susan has a joke for you. Oh no. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, Oops, let me read it so I get it right. Why are ants so healthy? 
because they have antibodies. Little antibodies. <laughs> I don't get Dude, it. Antibodies are things Ant that kill like <laughs> disease that's trying to hurt antibodies you. Antibodies oh. are the are the things in your body that kills the disease. Oh, now, okay, that one, it's okay. I had no idea what so, It's because you're 10 and 11 twelfths and three quarters. That's the problem. As soon as you turn 11, then you'll get it. So the, the science seesaw leans a little more towards tech than it does to yeah. biology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to flunk biology. Then, uh, how, long does, how long does for canned milk? A uh, couple of years, yeah, yeah a few years. Uh, so vegetable gardening. Really, you need to be putting in your vegetables. You really should have put them in now. You can still get some tomatoes and peppers, but that's why I haven't done any videos because even though I have some I still need to plant, I guess I could do a video on me planting them, but I'm kind of stalling because I don't know if I should put them in planters to take with me or if I should put them in the ground if we're going to get stuck here. So I'm kind of torn. The thing is, if we move, we don't want to move 25 planters worth of tomatoes and peppers because it's not just going to be in town probably. So I need to just get it. We are taking off Friday. I don't care if the book spontaneously explodes behind me. We are taking off Friday. We were trying to take off tomorrow, but we're having... We're having an issue and we have to go up and see our uh, printer friends, Fareed and Goalie, tomorrow to see if they can help us with this issue. <laughs> it's like we cannot get it done. You know, this is going to be a bestseller. Do you know how I know? We've had nothing but problems. Actually, every time we found that the things that are the most difficult tend to be the most amazing when they finally get together. <laughs> A lot of people yeah. loving your hair. Oh, thanks. It's Actually, body and shine and it looks very nice. I realized that's what I was looking at earlier. It de-poofed, but I got it cut today. Grandma and I went to go get our hair cut. That poor haircut lady, the baloney she's having to go through to just open her salon just absolutely makes me livid. I just want to go, never mind. It just makes me livid. <clears throat> uh, what do you do with a lot of lettuce in a bag? You eat it. There's not really much we do except eat it. Yeah. Right? We just eat it. We in used a... to have an old farmer guy that lived down the road from us, and he would cook it in bacon grease and um, eat wilted lettuce. That was actually really good. How am I feeling? Eh, I'm depressed. So I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. I just don't feel like doing anything. I just feel like sitting told Mike we should go camping this weekend, but I think it's supposed to rain. And we don't have a we don't have an RV anyway. We would just have to sleep in the back of the van, but So Mike's perspective is she feels like sitting, but because she's so type A, she doesn't feel like sitting at the same I time. I hate sitting. See, let's look at the ten day forecast here. What are we supposed to be doing? Oh yeah, see we would go camping and it would rain on us, so never mind, we won't do that. Besides, mom and the kids are coming. So your new house will have a greenhouse. Yes. If it's not got one when um, if it's not got one when we move in, my ever faithful husband told me he would build me one. And I've done it before. And so. you've done it before, so you know what you're doing. We're this gonna time, be though, we'll upgrade the materials. If the area we're looking at um, is where we end up, we're gonna be about a thousand feet to two thousand feet higher than we are now. So my growing season is going to go from Mother's Day, instead of being from Mother's Day to the middle of October, it's going to go from the middle of June to the middle of September. So if I want to grow tomatoes or anything like that, I'm going to have to have a greenhouse. Interesting. Tanya's review says put a paper towel in the bag with lettuce. Somebody else said if you, uh, if you put lettuce in quart jars, I find they last longer. And somebody else was saying if you dr uh, cut off the bottoms and, dry, and put them dry in bags. I didn't, I haven't heard yeah. of that before. Uh, <clears throat> let me tell you, Kathy, she says, I need to buy the cookbook yet. I don't think my husband will approve because I have only about 200 plus cookbooks. It's a family thing. Let me tell you, I don't know how many people, and they, I'm not joking. I don't know how many ladies have told me they have huge cookbook collections. Mine is the only one they use. I'm serious. I get all the time. I get comments. So ask for it for your birthday or Mother's Day, and then he won't feel guilty. 
then you won't feel guilty. And he could just get it for a gift. Kathleen was talking about your eggs thing about floating or sinking. She says they stood up, but they did they they were still sunk. I ate two for breakfast. How long did they last? How will I know when to throw out? I know when the they float, it. yeah. So Dining on a Dime Volume 2 is going to have this in there, but if <clears throat> just put it in a thing of water, and if they float, they're still good. They're not good. If they sink or stand up, they're still good. But if they stand up? Okay, if they sink, they're really, really super fresh. If they stand up, they're medium fresh, and if they float, they're bad. So if they're standing okay. up, they've got a couple more days? Like a couple more weeks, but yeah. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, Elaine had said, I've been doing pantry grandma's grocery store for years, and it works. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Martha wanted to know why we're moving. Because our garage, um, I mean warehouse, cannot hold all the books that we have. We have about 25 pallets worth of books coming the first week of August or second week of August. We did sit and figure last night that I think with pre-orders, because we're going to start pre-orders in about two or three weeks, probably two or three weeks, uh, probably July 1st, we're going to do pre-orders. And with all the pre-orders, we will probably have enough books sold that if we can't get them in the garage and they're sitting on the driveway, we're going to do a please don't let it rain dance. And <laughs> hopefully, here's the plan. The day before, or two or three days before, we're going to print all the labels and then literally as soon as the semi pulls out yank those books open start slapping labels on throwing them in the truck and hauling them down to the post office like we did in january when we got the last thing of books and they didn't fit in the garage so yes mainly though the house isn't quite configured right now for our business particularly and somewhat for our family and we're in a really close neighborhood so as Lori says, because we live in a dog park. Oh, I'm mercy. Yeah. So we, where we live right now, it's one of those neighborhoods where all the houses are really, really close together. And all the houses around us have dogs that bark a lot. Yeah. So we kind of would like to get further away from that. Yeah. So, Michelle, yay, finally caught a live show. Glad you made it, Hello. Michelle. And if you're new, anyone else, if you're new around here, check yeah. in and say, hey, we're really glad you're here. Tony, love the way you say squash. A lot of that's people... the proper way and no one ever says it says it and you know it's like they need to get their laundry washed in the arkansas river <laughs> yes i forgot about the so arkansas. that it's done properly and then go home and eat their squash <laughs> uh okay so let's see one that i made your meatloaf and bean goulash yesterday delicious i told you ah, that's awesome that's some of our favorites summer and a lot of other people saying can't wait for the new cookbook so Yay! the new one and the updated version of dining that's not the 20th anniversary should be coming out around the same time. Yeah. So here's the thing. Dining on a Dime Volume 1 will have every recipe the same. We're just removing how we wrote the cookbook. Dining on a Dime Volume 2 is going to have all new recipes, over 800 recipes and tips. It's not quite as big as dining on a dime but we're still what was our page count 480 on the new one yeah uh, 400, 436 oh 436 okay so 436 is how big it's gonna be so we try to make it a little smaller because we were having binding problems we we're having one. binding issues so we were trying to keep all our future books 400 pages or less didn't quite get there but we got close enough so uh, my nails are the impress Stick on nails. Love these things. Impress. You need to send me some nails. I keep sending you all kinds of business. <laughs> but they're the impress nails and I love them. Lynn also asked, how long do they last with hand washing and dishwashing? What? My nails? nails? Okay, well, I've had these on since not, not last Monday, but a week ago last Monday. So 10 days. I've had these on 10 days. And I washed, I've washed the bathrooms, I've washed the floors, I've washed the dishes. Mike does a lot of dishes, but I've done dishes. Um, My nails are less attractive. So. I was gardening. 
I was out digging potatoes, or I mean, not digging potatoes, but adding soil to potatoes. I was dealing with the tomatoes, pulling weeds. There you go. I love them, and I think Impress should send me a whole selection of nails for pushing so many. You can't, I, people love them because you can't find them in the store, and I finally had to start ordering online. And I just wait for them to have a sale, so... So we had a number of people saying this, but Kimberly says, getting your cookbook, I got rid of all my cookbooks. I'm down to just Betty Crocker, my Alaska cookbook with my Alaskan recipes and your cookbook. Ah, oh, thanks. Rebecca, that's true. I have a lot of cookbooks, but yours is by far my favorite. Definitely worth every penny. Wow. Oh, thank you. Wow. Actually, after we've been killing ourselves to get them together for this round, we're really glad to hear And it. Beth, I got rid of all my cookbooks except <gasps> for Yay. dining on a dime. I'm telling you guys, we really worked hard. Yeah. We have a cookbook collection in all of them for this one. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, well, we able to be get one of your new cookbooks signed. Well, for you, Sherry, I'll sign it. Because <laughs> you love us. And we love you, Sherry. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I've been using your mask. Thank you. When I'm not in my moments of rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> Which is almost all the time. <laughs> no, I mean, when I... So we live right on the edge of two counties. One county, masks are required, and the other county, they're re recommended. So, yeah, when I have to go into the other county, I wear them all. I wear it all the time. Uh, yes. Um, Dining on a Dime 2, Volume 2, will be available as an ebook. Yes. Well, Lee is asking, when do we think we will okay. do the ebook? Okay, so versions. here's what we're doing. We are going to offer the ebook with a coupon for a refund for the full price of the book, okay? If you buy a print book. So, that way you if you want Dining on a Dime Volume 2, and you are just dying to be looking through the great and wonderful recipes that we have because they're just, I cannot wait to get started. Um, we're going to offer a coupon. So I, I'm just throwing out a number. It's not going to be this price. It's probably, what did, let's see. $34.99 is going to be the retail price of Dining Volume 2. The ebook is going to be slightly less, probably like $29. So what I'll do is, don't quote me on that. That's just kind of what we're thinking right now. But we will offer the ebook for, let's say, $29. Send you a coupon with the ebook. Then you can use that $29 coupon to buy the print book when the print books come in. But here's the problem. We can't just do pre-orders like we've done in the past because our new shipping system i don't have a way to divide up the orders from pre-orders versus what people are ordering now so you're gonna be responsible for saving that coupon and using it and i'm not gonna be able to go in and reset coupons guys you are gonna have to be responsible yourself to put that coupon print it out Put it in your underwear drawer or something with your chocolate so you don't lose it. And then when the print books come out, you use that coupon and then you'll just have to pay the additional like six or eight bucks, however much it is. I don't know, for the print book edition then. Okay, does that make <clears throat> sense? But that's how we're going to do it so that you guys can get, get it and start looking at it. We're thinking... I don't know, do you think? I'm saying July 1st, maybe sooner, but I'm saying July 1st, the way things are going. <laughs> Look what Jane says. Ah! I will give up my Dining on a Dime cookbook when you tear it from my cold, dead hands. I love it. Oh! <laughs> I hope we never have to do that, but thank you. <laughs> what did that say? Do you so, know what the cost of the new book? So, Dining on a Dime 2... Is going to be $34.99. Dining on a Dime Volume 1 is going to be $39.99. And we will have sales. So, so you'll be able to get it yeah, for less than that. But that's the retail price. But not as little as this. Not as, it's not going to um, be as cheap as this. Unless 
here, I'm not going to say it's never going to be cheaper than this. Let's say we don't get moved. We've got 5,000 books sitting in our garage and we've got to move. I will have a sale. I ain't moving all those books. So I'm not going to tell you it's never, ever, ever going to be cheaper. It could be, but as a general rule, our cost is a lot, higher, cost on is a lot higher on the new ones and we just can't go below a certain price or then we're losing money. So we just, we can't do that. But, um, there was something else I was going to say about that. Oh shoot. I can't remember. Oh, well. Yeah. And for all the people in Canada, we, we've tried to, uh, in the future, we hope someday to figure out a way to get Amazon up there to send it because it would save Yeah. Because the shipping, the U.S. Post Office just raised the shipping uh, for Canada yeah. quite a bit. And I ain't charging any more, guys. That's what the post office charges me is $50. It seems ridiculous. I don't put any charge... extra, no handling, none of that. That's just the shipping cost. Well, especially since Canada is, yeah. I mean, most parts of Canada aren't that much further than a lot of places in the U.S. I'm just shocked at how much more expensive when it is. When do you expect the gluten-free book to be done? <laughs> <sighs> We're still shell-shocked from proofreading these two books, but I'm hoping, I know I said July 1st, but we keep having issues with printing issues. So, July 15th, maybe, for the ebook. I just need my, I have to test gluten-free flour and like three recipes, and I'm totally done with testing recipes. Mike has to proofread it, and then it'll be ready. And here's what we're gonna do with the ebook. I think, or I mean with the gluten-free book. Here's what I've decided today. You didn't know I decided this, did you? I decided I out this you today. Find out. <laughs> so I don't know how well this gluten-free books is gonna sell. I personally think it's darn tootin' good and I can't wait to be using it. And I am using it right now, actually. Don't smack your computer. Yeah, I was trying not to. Darn tootin' good must be it pretty is, good. It is darn tootin' You're good. You're smacking the computer, oh, move it over, woman. It's darn tootin' good. And I've been making the cookies and the muffins and the homemade bread because I can make homemade bread for about a dollar instead of the seven dollars I have to pay. Anyway, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do the same thing with gluten-free, dairy-free, but here's the catch. I'm going to offer it as an ebook first with a coupon. Okay. If on the pre-orders I sell 500 copies of the ebook with the coupon, we will go ahead and print it. Oh, okay. If I do not sell 500 copies, I am not going to print it. Then it would be an ebook then it would only be an ebook, okay? Because this is such a specialized book, I don't know what the market is gonna be for it. So if you guys want it in print, when the ebook comes out, you need to share it on every social media site that you know, once you look at it and see how wonderful it is. <laughs> if you want it in print, because printings of books are very, very expensive especially when you do them on the scale that we're doing them and i just with us moving and all of that stuff i just do not want to have a bunch of inventory just sitting that nobody wants okay and also we decided a couple days ago we are going to bring the planners back but we're only gonna have 400 copies. <gasps> okay? Dun, dun, dun. Now, I would have maybe done more if we weren't in the middle of trying to move, but once again, this whole trying to move things, we really just wish we could find a house so we can get settled. <laughs> but, once again, moving books is a huge pain in the patootie, even with three boys helping. So we just cannot have a lot of inventory on hand. So we're hoping to move before yeah. the other books arrive from the printer. Yeah. And it's very possible the house that we get may not have a storage building yet when we get there. So all the books may have to go into the garage, I mean warehouse, until we can get a real warehouse built. 
And so that could take us six or nine months to get a warehouse built. So, uh, Yes, Scarlett, we do use media mail. And yes. if you just go to our store and click add to cart, it will tell you the shipping yeah. to your Yeah, I think area. it's like $6 for this now. Is it, US, yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's five fifty or $6. I can't remember. But uh, guys, this is a super heavy book. So I don't just... One lady... <sighs> One lady was just chewing my hide because I was just ripping her off. She's like, it only costs two fifty to ship media mail. Yeah, for a one pound book. This is not a one pound book. It's a hefty book. And so I only charge what it costs me to ship, guys. Okay. So oh, Debbie was telling somebody else that the Dining on a Dime current edition of the book is currently on sale for $22.46. Yep. Um, a couple of people asked, and that the new one will not be that low priced. Yep. Um, they have the same recipes in them, but this one mm -hmm. has uh, 20th anniversary things that won't be in the other one. The other one's a little bit. Revised. Jody. M press I M P R E S S M press nails. Those are the ones that I love. Um, let's see. <laughs> She's going to hit the table. Yeah. All right, and we already. I think we already pretty much hit all that. You could rent a pod and park it in your driveway. We can't. <laughs> we would be fined by our HOA like well, hundred dollars a month. The funny thing is. Stupid. The number of books that are coming would require probably three pods. Oh, at least. At least three if pods. If not more. Yeah. Yeah. Three to five. I, I think it would be closer to... Well, oh, you mean if we don't get them all in the garage. Sorry, yeah. I was thinking all the books. Yeah, we would probably need three pods for what's left. I was but... thinking she meant so that they would be easy to move. Yeah, them. yeah. And that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's just that there's a... That... If we didn't have an HOA, which the is from Satan. Funny but... thing about... Our situation is we were able to move all six of our family when we moved here back here nine years ago. We were able yeah. to move us all in a, a kind of a medium-sized U-Haul truck. truck. Yeah. And most of the people here needed to have multiple trucks. They were coming semi. in semis for two people. So we've been able to move a lot of people in the small thing because we don't have a lot of stuff. Yeah. But what we do have a lot of is book inventory when we have a full yeah. stock and that's the thing that we really yeah. don't want to have to move we are using a realtor yep and it's kind of funny it was it's our neighbor we met him at a garage sale selling another house for one of the neighbors and he's a real go-getter he's really he's really working hard <laughs> all righty okay well cool all right, guys. Thanks a lot, everyone. Living so on a dot com. Thank you for all those wonderful testimonials, guys. Man, I tell you, after Monday's show, I was like, that's it. I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. Well, <laughs> I was uh, so discouraged. after, And that's when we know the shows are good. And here's the thing. I told her I thought it was great that day. I was so discouraged. I went to bed, and I never go to bed. But here's the thing. We shipped out 20 Bibles since Monday. So that's how I know it's a show that's good. So thank you, Barbara. I was going to show you the box. I got a box. That was your box that you bought of Bibles. I forgot to bring it in. We already showed Jonathan his box. So, yeah. so thank you, guys. If you want or need a Bible, everybody needs a Bible. But if you want a Bible, you don't have we one. have easy-to-read New Living Translations. You can just email me, editor at Living on a Dime, and we will give you one on us. Postage paid, everything paid. But yeah, after Monday's show, I was like, that's it, I quit, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm tired. And then I got a really encouraging email from a viewer who said, don't quit. See, I didn't even say anything about quitting on Monday's show. <laughs> and she was like, don't quit. And I said, you know what? God told you to send me that because I'm just ready to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Seems like there was something else. Oh, uh, if you missed any of the links in the show or if you uh, you wanted to find something that we shared and you just didn't see it in there, you can go to livingonadime.com and click show notes. And the links will be in there yeah. for a couple of days. Yep. Some links stay in there longer. Yep. So. Livingonadime.com, 20th anniversary, Dining on a Dime cookbooks. I've only got 200 and something left. I think that's about 20 to 25, no, I mean 15 to 20 days worth as fast as I've been selling them. So you don't have long. Um, 
Molly's going to be here Monday. We are talking about, oh, what did I tell mom we were talking about? Oops, I can't remember. Well, one of the things we're talking about, oh yeah, Monday. How to store food for $100. So I'm going to get $100 worth of food, and we're going to show you how to start your storage, your food emergency thing for $100 on Monday. And we're going to show you exactly what to buy. And hopefully mom and the kids will get here safely and there will be no car accidents, no tornadoes, nothing. Yes. And we will be here. And that she will be feeling good. She hasn't been feeling very spiffy herself. So <laughs> we're all just going to pot, aren't we? Okay. Thank you guys. Livingonadime.com. We'll